Happy Thursday. Let's make some comics. We're making art, but it's comic. It's comic book art. My name is Jersey Drozd, and the links that you need uh, to know more about me are right below me on the screen. They're also in the description for this video. What am I doing today? Well, Monday, I inked this drawing of Baron von Baron and his friends jumping off of a bridge that's getting struck by magical lightning. And now I'm going to take what I learned in recent weeks with regard to um, digital watercolor painting, and I'm going to try to apply it here and see how it goes. So I've got, as you can see, I've got the image flatted, black colors, but that's only so I can select my color areas and then watercolor on a transparent layer. So let's begin. The watercolors I'm using, I'm using a palette that I made, an analog palette I made a while back. And I'm using brushes by a gentleman named Ray Frendon, frendon.com. And just recently, he and I worked out, uh, he gave me an affiliate link. So if you are curious about these brushes and you want to try them for yourself, you can buy them with the link in the description. And it won't cost you anything extra, but I get a, I get a, uh, a cut. Because thanks for me using his brushes on my live streams a lot. Um, I was happy to do it because I, I use his brushes all the time. <laughs> and I get asked about him all the time. So it's like, well, yeah, that's, that's a no-brainer. Might be too dark. Uh, yeah, it's too dark. So I can't remember if I talked about this on Monday, but part of what I'm doing here with these experiments is not only just teaching myself how to do digital watercolor more thoughtfully. Oh, that looks not great. Um, But it's also to get some practice, like drawing different characters that I've created, interacting in different ways. Like something that I think I've talked about in past streams is like Tony Cliff once said, Tony Cliff, the artist of uh, Delilah Dirk and the Turkish Lieutenant, um, the Delilah Dirk series in general. Interesting. Okay. That he likes to sketch his characters in his sketchbook, uh, interacting with one another. And that teaches him something about the characters. And I think that's a really interesting insight. As a matter of fact, I just led that as a lesson with my newest comics class. Okay, well, you got character designs. You got them in a signature pose. Now, can you show me what it looks like when they're doing things? So I had the students write down like a whole bunch of verbs without telling them what they were going to do with them. And they had to draw their characters performing those verbs. Not too bad, right? Get more opaque. Maybe make my brush a little bit smaller. Nope. 
Not with my moral paintbrush. There. brighter. And then I was choosing, I think it was this red. I think I'm going to paint the sky red with this one. So I want to do like a little bit of red rim lighting on things. Nope, we're going to go slightly more indigo. That's the color I want. Get a little bit of dark green in there too. Wrong thing. It's almost like working with gouache sometimes, using these. Oh, hey, guess what? Spammer, you can go away. I block you. There we go. Add to block list. Guess what? I don't want to become famous. At least not that way. Oh my gosh, it's getting I'm getting slammed with it now. All right, well, I can also just turn off my chat on the screen. There you go. You ruined it for everybody, spammers. <laughs> wow. And I'm curious if they're getting blocked on the various platforms where they're slamming me. Thursday must be the day for spam bots to get up early. There we go. All blocked. Let's see if any if nobody shows up for a little while. I'll turn back on the, the chat overlay on the screen. Okay, what I think I'm gonna do. What happens if I do that? Oh, I've got my... Okay, there we go. Just want to add like a little bit of light blue. Get more of his like traditional jack suit color in there. And go back with the regular watercolor and the dark green. 
Take it out. There we go. I want to put a tiny bit of yellow right there. All right, I think I'm happy with that. I am not going to get this finished in, a, in an hour unless I hustle. Do I need to get my watercolor brush? You know what? I did the wrong color. Let's get a grayish green in here. There. I think the Baron is done. I zoomed in way too much. There we go. Purple to green. Where did you get mixed with green? Right there. Let's paint with some transparent ink so I can get some orange in there for the where orange the orange wisp is doing his thing so be honest i don't think i pulled it off here but what i was going for was playing with this idea it occurred to me the other day like it'd be fun if baron von bear could actually whoops ride his staff like but instead of riding like a witch he rides it like sort of like a be the word for it. <clears throat> what are what are those things? Segways. <laughs> oh. Not the most celebrated way to travel. Some people dig it. Bright purple. I am going to warm you up and brighten you just a touch, even though you're not in my palette. Oops, wrong, wrong area. And then green is going to have red in its shadow. Where is my, there's my nice green. And my blue will have orange in its shadow, right? So I just gotta find where I mixed orange with purple. Right there. Yeah. 
And save. Always save your work. While it saves. I'm working with a rather big file today. And I'm curious how this is going to go when I start doing some of those big elements like the bridge. We'll see how that, that goes. Right now, these are, relatively speaking, smaller elements. I'm not running into a whole lot of like lag or anything. Bah, bah, bah. What was I going to do next? Uh, how about the wisps? Go with and then go with the blue. Doing a lot of, uh, Window hopping. Go to that's too purple. Where's my indigo? There's my indigo. Hmm. Not crazy about that. I'm going to clear that and start over. What I might do, make it a little bit whiter in the middle. There we go. What is he riding on? It reminds me of Kirby in the Smash Ultimate trailer. Oh, it is kind of like that, isn't it? I didn't think about that. Yeah, it's like, okay, so I, I was saying this earlier before you got here, is is the idea is, so let's see if, I'll open up a picture of Baron Von Bear with his staff. Um, so this is what his staff looks like. And these little ghosts, these little wisps ride around in it with him. They're, the, they're what give him his magic. And so I thought, well, wouldn't it be cool if he rode it like a broomstick, but instead of riding it like the way a witch traditionally does like actually sitting on the broomstick what if he planted his feet on the bottom the bottom part of the staff and like sort of held it is sort of like and the, the analogy i was using earlier was oh it'd be like a uh segue <laughs> a magical segue but yeah i completely forgot about the, the whole business with kirby what did i do here oh look what i did when I selected the blue, I accidentally selected part of the Baron's jacket there. All right, well, that's no problem. I can use my watercolor blender. And again, these are Ray Frendon's brushes. People often ask me, what am I using here? These are, these are brushes you can get at Frendon.com. All right, I'm gonna have to break out, break out the silly tools and actually smudge this stuff. I think. Where are those tools? Where did the smudge to? Ah, it's over here. Blur that just a little bit. And put a little bit more watercolor over top just to give it some texture. There we go. Yeah, I don't think I got the proportion of the staff right. Like, if you look at the staff, well, maybe, maybe. It looks like I might have, maybe we'd see it from that angle. Uh, I I've been putting these images together really fast because I just don't have a ton of time budgeted for doing my own personal experiments. Um, and so the original drawing, I think, let's see, the inks I did in an hour, the pencils I did in less than an hour. So I just haven't had the time to spend on this the way I would like, so... I, I'm I'm doing a lot of good enough 
<laughs> just to get the the work done. But I feel like that's that's kind of that's par for the course with this this line of work. I think a lot of comics is is doing a lot of like good enough work. Okay, so now I got to do violets. Whoops. And I'm going to warm you up just a tiny bit. Too dark. I must have a red and violet mix. Hmm. I think what I'm going to do is I'm do the same thing I did with blue, just make it a little bit whiter there. And I'm going to have to change her color holds there. Yeah, that's not... Now for orange. Gonna need a big brush for this. bright yellow in there. Oh, yeah, so you're noticing how Violet does like a zigzaggy thing, sort of like Dark Sides of Mega Beams. So the Wisps all have different kinds of magic and, and corresponding different personalities. And so I've tried to think about how I could use the shape of their movement to telegraph what their personality is. And I won't say what they are here. I'm just going to let you look at them and decide for yourself. But um, hopefully that comes through when I make more mini comics about these characters is that, you know, there's, there's some that are more dynamic than others, right? So this is me just playing with like shape and line language to try to communicate how things feel and come across. But, but yeah, this, this, this kind of stuff is like what makes me get really excited about comics. What I love about the medium is being able to play with things like that. That's too red. Need that yellow orange again. on my color palette when I mean to go over here to this color palette.
Where's my green and purple mix? Green, purple. There we go. That's nice and dramatic. All right, so Charles is asking, I have a couple of questions. I can, I guess I can turn on the chat overlay again. Uh, it looks like the spammers are gone. A um, couple of questions. I have the Adobe Suite CS4 and I have Manga Studio, not the EX version with the master pages. Does it make sense to switch? Um, it depends. On, I mean, I hate to be, you know, doing that guy thing where I'm like, it depends. It depends. You know, it's like you're looking for an answer on something and I'm like, I don't know. And part of it is because like, I don't know exactly what your use case is. So for me, I had CS4 that I bought outright, like, like, like a gentleman. Um, and then I switched over to Clip Studio Paint or Manga Studio after that, partially because I didn't want to have to pay for a subscription. Although Manga Studio, if you have it on an iPad, Clip Studio, if you have an iPad or a mobile device, you do pay a subscription. Um, so there's that. But if what you're asking is, can it be a full replacement for Photoshop? Again, I would say it depends on what you want to do. I haven't been super successful at using it for like photo manipulation. I've switched to using other apps like Affinity Designer. Affinity Designer, which is another inexpensive app. If most of what you do in Photoshop is drawing, then I would say, yeah, it's it's awesome. Downside is it doesn't, uh, you can't work in CMYK. And that might be a, a deal breaker for you. I know that some people are really upset about that. I'm currently working with a CMYK preview on, so I'm seeing what it looks like in CMYK while I'm working. But uh, where was I? I'm looking for this, this in there. Okay, there we go. And as you can see, the interface is a lot like Photoshop, but but it is different. I mean, they call th things are named different. Uh, it gets a little weird, like when you start thinking about like here's your tool palette on the side, but then there's these nested sort of little pockets of like okay, I grabbed the the brush tool, but now there's like these little sets of brushes that are nested in there, and then there's like more brush settings down here, right? And then over on the right, you can toggle between your preview, a swatch. Well, this is like sort of like a, a reference image view that I'm using as a color palette right now. And then your layers and so on. But I'm telling you, the, the, the vector drawing tools are and the ruler tools just can't be beat. I mean, it's it really is. It's such a game changer. And if you do a search for, you know, vector inking, Clip Studio Paint, um, ruler tool, Clip Studio Paint, you'll be stunned at what you can pull off with it. So, uh, oh, you had some other questions, Charles. <laughs> Second question, ever thought about Art and Story Reunion? Also, any plans for the next couple of years to go to SPX? Um, gosh, that's a good question. I don't know. I don't... I would very much love to go to some conventions again. I mean... And I, I've said here on this live stream that like once we're all properly vaccinated and like things are safe enough to gather in public, one of the first things on my agenda is going to be like get together with some artists and just draw in a space together. That's going to be amazing. Um, but yeah, I'd, I'd love to go to conventions again. Oops, whoops, 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 whoops. Especially when I have some new stuff to take around. I'm 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 working on some new things. And I like the SPX. I, I love going to Washington DC. I mean it's one of my favorite places. So yeah, I'd love to go. 
Um, as far as an art and story reunion, I'd have to talk with Kevin and Mark about that. Um, I haven't talked with them in a while. And I recently found all of the old art and story audio files, like everything we did, almost. I think like two things are missing. And uh, I kind of want to put it someplace where people can get it, even though like I think I'd probably cringe to listen at some of that because like some of it has like a lot of my young man thoughts in it. <laughs> and as long as we can all accept that, yeah, like we're all we're all young ones. Um, but I don't want to do that without Kevin and Mark's permission. So I need to reach out to them about that too. It would be interesting to see where we all stand on different things we talked about back then today. So, Doradoys, do you want to see how I do this? I think I have, actually, I have right here about, like, do I come up with the story first and then come up with the art? For me, it's almost simultaneous. Like, this is, well, here, let me switch to my overhead cam so we can actually see this better. Um, so, this is what my first Pickles and Taft mini comic plot looked like. So, I start with writing some ideas, but then, like, things that I could better express visually. I just doodle. And you can see they're very loose doodles. And here's some things that didn't make it into the book. Well, it's like cut scenes. It's like originally I wanted to have them actually go to the dance and like guys like, oh, okay, it costs this much to get in. Um, instead, I just have the characters talk about it on page two. Like we don't have any money. So, and then I even have some scenes where Pickles is, let's see if I can get the camera on this. Pickles is trying to convince Taft to go by like wafting the sense of cabbage at him. <laughs> but anyway, so... I just start writing out like sentences, but then as things like as panels reveal themselves to me, because like for me, at least throwing down the lines on the paper activates that part of my brain that starts generating more ideas. And so this is why like I subscribe to like the Natalie Goldberg idea of like, just keep the pencil moving. Don't sit there staring at the blank page, just start drawing and start writing. So do you see like some ideas start like popping into my head, like exactly how I, I, see them in my brain other ones don't and so those parts become more righty parts right and so I, I jump back and forth and then this becomes uh this gets turned into thumbnails like this and you know, little sticky note thumbnails oops it's upside down so like once i've got all this written out like the plot part then i figure out okay what can fit in whatever my page constraints are. So in this case, it'd be an eight page story. See, when I get to my second round of thumbnails, I'll go back to that shot of Pickle saying, anyone need help? There she is. And what is he saying? Is there anything you think is a good, is a bad idea? That actually became panel two of page three of the book. So the thumbnails come after I've written everything out, written in the sense of, writing some words and drawing some pictures to accompany those words. So it's like almost like a children's book, I guess, is how it starts. And then characters don't stay the same in these early drafts, right? So like originally in this story, it was going to be like a little rat wizard, just because I, I like the idea of like putting a tortoise with like a an elderly rat, sort of like mutant ninja turtles. And I thought, ah, you know, it's like, let's not wear our influences so much on our sleeve. So right after I finished it, I'm like, no, nope, no, nope, no, nope. we're going to change the animal. It's going to be a chicken, right? So... I played with a lot of different things before I got there. And then, oh, yeah, and then I break down the plot into, like, eight eight pages, right? And I try to make it so that each one of these numbers only has one or two actions because you really can't fit that much in a comics page. So there we go. I hope that makes sense. That's my way of doing it. Everybody's way is going to be different, and, it, and that's the way it ought to be. But I understand the value of seeing how others do it as a wayfinding tool to help you know what some of the areas are that you could go. Oh, I did the thing again. I want to go to my flats layer. Turn off the flats layer. Go to the watercolor layer. Man, there's a lot of jumping around. Uh, now I need pink. Pickles, where is your color on here?
A little dark. That's a little better. What's going on here? Oh, okay, okay. Just didn't color that red. I'll get that in a second. And I need a pink with some blue in it. So where's my red? Go to oh, the green will do. Okay, let's go back to this layer. Select my red. I'm going to paint all of these the same colors because they are very tiny on the image and I want to make sure that I have enough time to do everything I got to do here. And I can differentiate a little bit. So for those who are getting here a little bit after the start, this was penciled in Clip Studio Paint, inked on watercolor paper, scanned, imported back into Clip Studio Paint, and now I'm painting it with the watercolor brushes in Clip Studio Paint. So now let's go to one of the big jobs on here, which is that bridge. Whoops. How am I doing on time? 38 minutes. And like I said earlier, this is a very large drawing. So I'm not sure what's going to happen when I try to do these big washes, but we'll see. Yeah, my, my computer's choking a little bit. Oh, I grabbed white. How did I grab white? I wanted to grab... What was I trying to grab? I need my more opaque watercolor brush for this one.
Ups, ups, ups. This is going a lot faster than I thought it would. I am very happy right now. I was con I I had myself talked into this idea that this is going to like take me two and a half hours to do. So for further context for those who haven't been tuning into every live stream and why would you cuz you all have a live to lead. Um although you can subscribe. Um I'm I'm really these experiments are I'll, uh, 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 how would I put this? A big motivator for these experiments is to try to optimize for speed and get good quality images faster than I've ever done before. Oh, thank you, Matt, for the comment about the shape and texture of the explosion. I do love drawing explosions. <laughs> uh, I like drawing explosions a lot. And... I mean, this, this image exemplifies like what I'm after with my work. I'm going to save real quick is this idea of cute little characters doing like gigantic, um, you know, multi-million dollar movie effects budget kind of action film, right? Like those summer blockbusters, but with like, a little bit more heart and aimed a little bit younger. But hopefully older people will like this too. Yeah, Matt, it, it, it is, I will agree with you that explosions are deceptively um, easy. They look very easy to do, but like, and I actually teach this in my comics classes, like how to like think about the physics of the explosion and how when you get closer to the center, you can think of it as like a grid of time. And like at the center, there's more kinetic energy. And so the bursts and puffs are going to be tinier, narrower, and, and more elongated. But as they get further out and they have time to expand, you're going to make them progressively wider and wider. Right. And then also you want to think about like if you're going to do any kind of radial lines, make sure they go towards wherever the center of the explosion is happening. So all of these lines converge like somewhere around here. Right. And then, yes, you want to think about like the layering and the billowing. So it's you really do have to think like in three dimensions to do this. And you have to understand a little bit of, of like at least have like a, an intuition about how physics work. I remember there was a, an 11 year old boy in my class. And I taught him this lesson and his mom came to pick him up afterwards. And like that kid, like I might as well have given him the Da Vinci code. <laughs> like he, he's like, tells him, I was like, mom, you're not going to believe what I could do. <laughs> like that's, that's why I do this. Right. Cause like, yes, like 11 year old me would probably plot at the thought of like having somebody like succinctly explain how to, how to do this. Oh, I hate when my brush changes to the eyedropper by accident. I still haven't figured out how to how to fix that. Okay, time to break out the regular watercolor. Oops, in the right place. Just want to get the. Let's see. So we're gonna want a warmer green. I want it be interacting with the explosion. Actually, how about we just do this? Let's wipe away some of that green with some transparent ink. Switch to the lighter green. That's still too dark. How about we go here? There we go. Go back to my nice dark indigo infused green.
want to get just a tiny bit darker there. Can I? There we go. That's good. Okay, save. What? How, how am I doing on time? I've got 13 minutes. Jordis is asking, ever think of doing an expository comic book about Baron Von Baer? Maybe his journal with his sketches of artifacts from his adventures. That would be cool. That would be cool. That's a really neat idea. Jordis, thank you. Yeah, I, I just might. Like like a like a separate sort of like Baron Von Baer's journals kind of book. That's a neat idea. You get to do some like lore building and like world building and stuff like that. All right, where's my, where's my purple at? All right, there you are. Um, now it's time for a wet wash. Big brush, let's see if it can do it. Get slightly darker purple. There we go. Ah, got my wet brush. Let's get a little bit of some warmth in those mountains. Just the tiniest bit. I'm going to make this sky. I decided at the very start I was going to make the sky kind of red. And that means I also need to add a little bit of green in the shadows there. So where's my purple and green? Purple and is that you? I guess so. Our mountains to our sky. As you can see, I, when I was flatting it, I really wasn't thinking about what the colors were going to be. I was just trying to get a rough idea. So now. Oh, I am so tempted to cheat right now, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. Let's see. I'm test my limits to see how fast I can get this stuff done. Yeah. Watercolor, more opaque. Alter wet. Alter wet fuzzy. This. Too big. The, the texture's too big. Do watercolor simple. Nice big brush. Okay, so now try to get some yellow inside of this for the explosion. Pretty yellow. As a matter of fact, I'm going to do that with the mountains too. I should have done that because there's be like a little bit of yellow glow coming around there. Um. Bring the selection back on. I'm going to get some purplish clouds in there now. So let's break out watercolor. Oh. That's too purple. That's too gray. I think what I actually want, 
I think I want purple, but I want like a, a red. There we go. I want like a violet red. Then what I'm going to do is transparent. I might have made the sky a little too busy. I think I'm going to dial that back. Here's what we're going to do. We're going to... What I'm doing right now is I'm just going in with transparent ink and washing over top, just the way you would with like regular watercolor. Take some water and add it to the color. I didn't switch back to my... There we go. Maybe what I'll do is... There we go. Now what I'm going to do is go back to my mountains and put a little bit of that yellow glow over top of them too. Not because the yellow would be reflecting on the mountains, of course, but just to give it a sense of like that yellow glow is... There we go. And I might want to add a little bit more contrast to that bridge. How am I doing on time? I have six minutes. Can I do the lightning in six minutes? I bet I can. Okay. Let's get watercolor more opaque. And I'm going to get a nice dark uh, indigo. There we go. Nope. Yeah, actually... Purple. Huh. I got to do the explosion too. I forgot about that. There we go. That's looking better to me. And now I can test this real quick. First of all, I'm going to save because I did a lot of work. Now I'm going to test my idea here by looking at a correction layer. So I go to, I go to layers, layer, uh, new correction layer, hue saturation, lumin luminosity, turn the saturation all the way down. I can look at my values. Let's put that above everything. Toggle that off. There's my colors again. All right. Grab that explosion. Hopefully this one will be easy to do. 
is really all I need is some yellow around the outside of that. Basically just tab away everything. There we go. So when is the next live stream going to happen? I always do this at the end. Let's do it a little ahead of time. Let's look at the month. And the next one will be Monday, the 29th of March. March 29th, Monday. If you're watching live, or even if you're watching after the fact. I have to get my stuff back. Um... And if you think this is interesting and you like that I'm doing this, uh, you could consider hitting that like button on the video wherever you're watching. That helps more people find the videos. I appreciate your company while I'm doing these things and for asking me interesting questions about art and process. I've said a lot of times, you know, this is my favorite thing in the whole world. I love getting to share what I think is great about it with other people. There we go. The holds need to change, but we're getting there. Okay, home stretch. Get that magical lightning bolt figured out. chaotic that's what I wanted Okay, now to get the color of the holds fixed, let's go to my inks layer and grab some. Okay, here we go. Um, paint bucket. We're only editing layer, color margin. Let's turn up the color margin. And boom. And grab a lighter pink, and I'm going to use my watercolors. Only to select that layer. Oh, that's why. Get out of my way. There we go. Now I take my watercolor brush. Draw it. 
Why did that have to happen? Get out of here. Accidentally launched Animal Jam. <laughs> Freddy Kid's watching. You almost saw me get to play Animal Jam. Oh, what a disappointment. We'd rather watch that than watch you draw. I know. Don't you think I know that? Okay. There, we can lighten the lightning bolt somewhat. Give it a little sense of more distance. Now let's fix the color holds on the explosion and pick from my palette again. About. Again, I'm going to scrub around my brush to Oh, I'm a few minutes over. I'm going to check my layers again. Turn on my... Yeah, I got to fix the holds on the wisps. You here? You here? Boom. Nope, not orange. Not orange enough. Undo. Redo. Then let's go to the wisps, uh, violet. Oh, violet, I wish you could find a more brighter purple for you. I need that. No. Nope. Go back to this. Can I warm it up? That's better. All right, blue. Not blue enough. Too blue. <laughs> I can't win today. That's pretty good. A little lighter in there. And green, you're last, pal. that. That's good. Water color. Do that around the staff too. That gives like a little bit of a glow effect. Cool. Let's do the same up here. Oh, that's too bright. Let's go more like this. Back off you too. There we go. So we're not going bananas with that. I think it's done. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and toggle my values check on real quick. I don't know. I think it looks okay. What do you think? I'm going to save it. And I'm going to export it. And I'll post it on my social media. So, 
Thanks to everybody who's hung out with me today uh, on another drawing live stream. Record these twice a week, Mondays and Thursdays at 10 a.m. Eastern Time, 9 a.m. Central Time, 7 a.m. Pacific. And you can watch it wherever, you know, all over the internet at my YouTube and the Lena Tart Facebook, even Picardo for crying out loud. Uh, but the platform agnostic place to watch is jdros.com. Now, I do have a mailing list that you can join if you want to see everything that I do in any given month with like another little like pocket of thought that I have about storytelling. Um, you can go to jdros.com slash newsletter. And the link is also in the description for this video. So, well, I guess Twitch doesn't allow the, uh, the description to pop up in there. Thanks, Steve. If you think it looks good, then then it does look good. That That is, that is the... Uh, unassailable opinion. I am so grateful that you that you said that. And I feel like way better about this. Okay. So I'll be back Monday the 29th at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. Until then, I've been Jersey Drozd of jdrozd.com uh, and, you know, rss.jdrozd.com for everything I make. Okay, bye.